Justice Fancourt was the judge who was ruling over this particular case. What a case. name, though, right? Justice Fancourt. Like, he was born that way and he's like, I know what I'm going to do, be a judge. I don't think his first name is Justice, Carole, if that's a mistake. <laughs> that's, that's his title. <laughs> Smashing Security, episode 353, Phone Hacking, Piers Morgan, and Carol's Christmas Cock-Up, with Carol Terrio and Graham Cluley. Hello, hello, and welcome to Smashing Security, episode 353. My name is Graham Cluley. And I'm Carol Terrio. And Carol on this seasonal dun, dun, crimbo dun, holidays. final of the <laughs> year. The holidays are just around the corner. It's just you and me. We wanted a cheery farewell episode. Not farewell forever. No. But, uh, and <laughs> we'll be back in 2024. We're just having a little break because we need it. Yeah. And maybe the listeners need it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we get on with the show? Yes. Let's do this thing. But first, let's thank this week's wonderful sponsors, Collide and Vanta. It's their support that help us give you the show for free. Now, coming up in today's show, Graham, what do you got? I'm going to be reflecting on celebrity phone hacking. Oh, that's a nice little title. I like the alliterance. I like the way it flowed. Um, I'm going to be telling a Christmas tale. Did Charlotte fall for a scam? All this and much more coming up on this episode of Smashing Security. Now, chum chum. Uh, chums chums. The people chums, like chums. it. Chums yes, there's, there's more than one listener. Chums chums. That's right. Okay, we'll stick with chums. Uh, chums chums. My story is all about phone hacking and the celebrated journalist and broadcaster, Bon Viver, Piers Morgan. Your favourite. Friend of the show. He has blocked me, of course, on Twitter. Uh, Piers Morgan, for those people who are blissfully unaware of his lifetime achievement, his contribution to culture. Turn off now. He's the, <laughs> he's, the, <laughs> he's the author of such esteemed works as To Dream a Dream, The Amazing Life of Philip Schofield, which came out in <laughs> 1992. Uh, 1993, he wrote Take That, Our Story. And of course, his best selling. Uh, work was 1994's Take That on the Road, which I For think was real? There. Yes, these That's are all... That's what he wrote. This is what... This, this is, is what this is what he wrote. Yeah, this is, this is what he's contributed to the world. And he was also, of course, editor of the Daily Mirror newspaper. Yeah, that's much worse. From 1995 mm -hmm. until 2004, when he was sacked because he printed some crudely faked photos of British soldiers allegedly abusing Iraqi prisoners. Um, he lost his job over that. He refused to admit they were faked. And said, even if they were, it didn't matter because similar abuse was taking place elsewhere in Iraq. But anyway, now, Piers Morgan, he's an interesting fellow because um, he's sort of somehow embroiled, embroiled in, <laughs> in this whole phone hacking debacle. And I remember, you know, back around 2010, 2011, writing a lot about phone hacking mm. after it really became prominence. It was crazy at the time, though. Guys, if, if anyone who didn't live through it or didn't pay attention and loves a huge, like, debacle, wants to write a podcast about it, you could do a serial on oh, this. It'd be an amazing topic, because it all yeah. started, of course, with the news of the world, mm. uh, ultimately, which was a Murdoch newspaper, which was ultimately completely binned uh, and destroyed. People did go to jail. Yep. over the phone hacking, although not not some people who <laughs> might have expected. Cream pies were thrown. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, cream pies were thrown into Murdoch's face when he... Uh, 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 <laughs> shouldn't laugh, you know, he's an old fella, isn't he? Uh, is he still alive, yes. uh, Rupert Murdoch? Apparently, well, you know, who knows? Who knows? I think he's like Walt Disney. <laughs> he may be alive for the next 500 years. <laughs> He's been pickled well, <laughs> um, cryogenically suspended. Anyway, originally it was all about that, um, the Millie Dowler killing, and there, there was all kinds of hacking of murder victims and celebrities. And the way in which it worked uh, was that, in fact, this this is what a, an actual Sunday Mirror reported, because it, it stopped being just about the news of the world. It also was about other newspapers from other newspaper groups, including the Mirror newspaper. And there was one Sunday Mirror newspaper who told Newsnight back in 2011 how it was done. He said it was routine practice at his newspaper in the hunt for salacious celebrity gossip. What would happen is there'd be two journalists. Mm. They would ring a celebrity at the same time. 
And because they were ringing at the same time, it meant one of them would get the voicemail of the celebrity yep. because the line was engaged. And it would go straight to their answer machine. And if they entered the right PIN code, they were able to access that person's voicemail. Now, and- listeners, listeners, what do you think that <laughs> PIN code might have been? Yeah. So d- depending on who your cell phone provider was, it might be zero 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 or one two three four. But you know, most people didn't change their voicemail pin code. You could say silly of them, but th- they just didn't know. Many of them, uh, there was even the ability. I imagine any of us can do silly things on occasion. Right. Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this was something which was going on there, and what's happened in just the last few days is this subject of hacking of phone voicemails and the possible involvement of the esteemed, illustrious, honourable Piers Morgan himself. Mm -hmm. That has now been brought back into the news because there's been a high-profile court case in London brought by Prince Harry and others. Himself. Yes. Do you say Sir Self? Can I say him? Yeah. I think what, yeah. (laughs) Lord Self? I don't don't know. Is Harry still a, a highness or I don't know if he is because he's sort of, Ex Highness, do you say that? Blotted. <laughs> anyway, Justice Fancourt was the judge who was ruling over this particular case. What a case. name, though, right? Justice Fancourt. Like he was born that way, and he's like, "I know what I'm going to do. Be a judge." I don't think. I don't think his first name is Justice Carol. If that's a mistake, <laughs> that's that's his title. You don't. <laughs> I know quite that, work like that, but still, he has the name Court in his bat in his second oh, name. Oh, Van Court, yes, yes. yes. Oh, very. Oh, you're very clever. Um, he ruled in favour of Prince Harry and others, and uh, against Mirror Newspapers, and you know, they're going to have to pay out some, you know, some money and things uh, in terms of compensation because they're hurting. Well, you know? but, but well, tabloid newspapers, um, the readership has gone down over the years. In fact, even I'm afraid to say, Piers Morgan, even while he was editor, the, the I think the readership diminished by about thirty percent. It's a bit like really? when you have a CNN show or talk TV. It's uh, it does seem to drive people away. <laughs> anyway, not that I've got any beef with Morgan. I do have beef with Morgan, um, but <laughs> based upon the evidence presented, Justice Fancourt said that there was unlawful information gathering which was widespread at the Daily Mirror, Sunday Mirror and the people from 1996 onwards, Piers Morgan became editor in 1995, and that phone hacking started in 1996 and became widespread and habitual from 1998. Habitual. And he said there was, quote, no doubt that Piers Morgan knew about it. Of course he flipping did. Okay, sorry. Is, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's your hunch. I'm not a justice. Well, don't raise the ire of Piers Morgan, because as we saw, and as we can hear right now, Piers Morgan is very angry indeed about this. Prince Harry's outrage at media intrusion into the private lives of the royal family is only matched by his own ruthless, greedy and hypocritical enthusiasm for doing it himself. He talked today about the appalling behaviour of the press. But this is a guy who's repeatedly trashed his family in public for hundreds of millions of dollars, even as two of its most senior and respected members were dying, his grandparents. It's hard to imagine, frankly, more appalling behaviour than that. As for him saying this is a good day for truth, the Duke has been repeatedly exposed in recent years as someone who wouldn't know the truth if it slapped him around his California tanned face. Oh, that's mature. Good. (laughs) He went on to say that the prince had a ruthless, greedy and hypocritical enthusiasm for intruding on the personal lives of the royal family. (laughs) Oh, my God, Pat Cattle. For Piers Piers Morgan to say say that, you know, he can't... How dare you, sir? How dare dare you? you? That's my job. (laughs) So he says he's never hacked a phone and has never asked anyone else to hack a phone. Yeah. If we go back in our time machine, we can see what Piers Morgan has said about this in the past. Just three months ago, he used the same words, never hacked a phone, never asked anyone to hack a phone, to the BBC's Laura Kusenberg. 
I do want to ask you if you have ever listened to a voicemail without the consent of one of the participants. No, I, I've made it very clear. My position on hacking is I have never hacked a phone. I've never told anyone to hack a phone. No one's produced any evidence, including in this case. The paper ha you were editing benefited oh, and on. ran stories well, based on phones. Well, well, Did you notice that? She asks him, have you ever listened to a voicemail without the consent of the people on the voicemail? Right. He doesn't answer that. What he says is he's oh. never hacked a phone and never asked anyone to hack a phone. Yeah. Doesn't say he never heard any recordings. So someone else... Did she pull a Paxman? Is the next <laughs> time that she say it? I don't know. The question I asked was... I think you're fine. No, no. She doesn't, unfortunately. Uh. She doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. In May 2023, he told the BBC's Amal Rajan the same thing. He's never hacked a phone or asked anyone to hack a phone. Have you ever hacked a phone? No. Did phone hacking ever take place during your editorship of The Mirror? Not that I'm aware of. Because what you're not saying there is there is no phone hacking well, in the mirror. No. To be clear, originally I said I've never hacked a phone, I've never told anyone to hack a phone, and no story's ever been published in the mirror in my time from hacking the phone. And then somebody pointed out, well, you can only know the first two things for sure. Yeah. All I can talk to is what I know about my own involvement. I never hacked a phone, I wouldn't even know how. Let's just state some facts for some people that don't know the detail and haven't been over. And he said the same on Twitter in 2015, The Guardian in 2014. In fact, as Archie Bland of The Guardian wrote this week, he said, if you ask Piers Morgan what his favourite biscuit is at any point in the last 15 years, he will tell you that he's never hacked a phone and never <laughs> told anyone else to either. But if we go further back, we find a slightly different story because in 2006 he wrote an article for the Daily Mail it's still online I will link to it in the show notes where he admits that he played somebody a tape of a message Paul McCartney left for his fiance Heather Mills on yep. phone. there'd been some bust up Paul McCartney apparently sang we will work it out we will work it <laughs> copyright he sang that to her down the phone I don't think he's going to come after you <laughs> yeah no <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> and 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 uh, he, he got hold of this voicemail somehow. Now, Heather Mills says that she was called by a Mirror journalist mm -hmm. in 2001, quoted parts of the message that McCartney had left her on her phone after an argument. And you don't mess with Heather Mills, right? You never get on the wrong side of her. No. And she said to him, you obviously hacked my phone. If you do anything with this story, I'm going to go to the police. Mm-hmm. I remember this. Morgan. Mm -hmm told the Leveson inquiry into phone hacking that he couldn't discuss how that tape was made or who made it. But he did not ask anyone to record it. <laughs> he said, I can't give you any more information. It was a compromise a source. So the implication was it can only be McCartney himself or Heather Mills. McCartney wouldn't have done it because it didn't show him in a good light. Heather Mills said, Piers Morgan would have relished telling the inquiry if I had played him a voicemail. Of course he would have. Right. Uh, there's even uh, a, a video which uh, Hugh Grant shared back from 2003 with Piers Morgan telling singer Charlotte Church she should change her pin code on her phone to stop reporters from accessing her voicemail. There was a spate of stories that came out because of mobile phones. When they first came out on mobile phones, journalists found out that if the celebrity hadn't changed their pin code... Yeah, the, you right. can access their voicemail. You can ac access their voicemail just by tapping a number. Now, are you really telling me that journalists aren't going to do that? Yeah. If they know they can ring up Charlotte Church's mobile phone, listen to all her messages. They can't. Right? Now, all you have to do, and I know it's hard because celebrities don't like doing anything for themselves, <laughs> is actually change your security yeah, number. Yeah, I've changed my security number. And now you don't have to worry. Exactly. That was Piers Morgan talking in 2003 to Charlotte Church. And what did he say earlier this year? To Amal Ragan from the BBC. All I can talk to is what I know about my own involvement. I never hacked a phone. I wouldn't even know how. I wouldn't even know how. I wouldn't even know how. Hmm. Interesting. So somewhere along the line, round about 2011, for years, Piers Morgan was gleefully telling people in the public eye how easy it was to hack into their voicemails. There's GQ interviews, all sorts of things. But then he starts changing his tack. And he says, well, I've never told anyone to do it, and I've done, not done it myself. Deny, deny, deny. Yeah. Right. And the judge ain't buying it. Well, no fan court. Of course he's not. Good old justice, <laughs> Mr. Justice <laughs> fan court. He's, he's not believing in it at all. 
there is a serious side to it. I mean, it's, we can have a bit of a laugh about this, but this hacking of people's voicemails... Oh, it's fucking awful. ...did real harm. Yeah. And in the past, mirror lawyers have argued that although the hacking was unlawful and wrong, it didn't result in permanent harm because they're trying to reduce the damages. Now, if you speak to people like Paul Gascoigne, Paul Gascoigne was a British soccer player. Football. Who, yeah. Yeah, who was troubled, shall we say. He liked to, he liked to drink. Mm-hmm. And he's had mental health issues. He says that he was scared to speak to anybody when news stories about himself and his loved ones, his parents, his family, his kids, it got out. He says, and people can't understand why I became an alcoholic. He says it was huge damage which was done to him and his family. 100%. Like if this happened to you, for instance, right? You'd be yeah. like, hey, crawl, you told. And I'd be like, no, I fucking didn't. You'd be yeah. suspecting everybody and anybody. You would right. change your phone. You would get a burner. We'd be teasing you thinking you're a bit crazy, Clue. Like it would right. not be good for your mental health of anybody, I don't think. Sometimes these aren't people who have actually chosen to be in the public eye. Sometimes it's people who are simply came into the public eye by accident. As a consequence of some other news story, suddenly they are in the press. And the journalists trying to get the dirt on these individuals have dug around and found this stuff. So it's really, really unpleasant stuff. And all they have to do is guess the little passcode. Right. Now, fortunately, these days, the security is better. Um, I, I don't know, actually, can you access your own voicemail from someone else's phone anymore? It's been so long since I've had a new phone, <laughs> like, I can't actually it's, remember it's, how it, it works. Yeah, and also I don't listen to voice messages, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You may have loads. In fact, the only way you'd find out you had a, a voice message was if it get reported in the pages of a tabloid newspaper. Exactly. It'll serve a useful purpose for you. Yeah, I better call them back. <laughs> Anyway, it sounds like someone isn't telling the whole truth. Um, I don't know who that might be. Uh, and maybe we'll never get quite the full scoop on this one mm-hmm. unless these claims are properly investigated. But I think after this latest revelation and the opinions of the court, which has upset Piers Morgan so much, maybe we do need. Because apparently the phone hacking carried on even during the Leveson inquiry into phone hacking. Um, so it, this this has been an ongoing problem for many years. Graham, you know what? I have an idea for you because I know you're obsessed yes. with him in terms of, you know, watching him, you know, have his day. Are you suggesting I'm somehow <laughs> looking forward to his demise? I just, no, no, just here's my idea. You, you're, you're a clever yes. guy. You could put his face, our man, yes. what's his name again? Morgan. Moron. Yeah. On a website, right? Yes. And then anytime he tells a fib, have a little Pinocchio nose come out. And lengthen the Pinocchio nose as you feel he fibs his way along and see how long it gets. My monitor is not that wide screen, <laughs> I would need to... We'd have to scroll sideways a lot. <laughs> have to get an IMAX. <laughs> Crow, what's your topic for us this week? Well, I have a Christmas story of sorts, and it starts with a lady called Charlotte. Let's call her Charlotte. Right now, Charlotte is days away from kicking off her holiday break. She's been hammering it at work uh, and she can't wait because uh, she's way behind on all the things. Are you ahead of Christmas this year, behind on Christmas? Like, do you have all your gifts bought, wrapped, sorted, and the people you need to see and all that stuff? I'm having a fairly small, quiet Christmas. I think I've bought just about everything. I may have to get a few stocking fillers. Mm-hmm. You know, you know how you get just a few sweets or something. You may just put in a little bit of fruit. Or, so I may, I may do that. In the run up to the final Here's an apple. Days. Enjoy, baby. Well, yes. <laughs> it's from me to you. Party it's on. from me to you. <laughs> but there's a lot of things you want to do also at this season. Like, well, for me anyway, personally, like, you know, you have pantos, the cities and towns are decked out with little twinkles, right? I was actually in London a few weeks ago and I was all gaga looking at Carnaby Street, this year's decorations. It's all space and stars. It's really beautiful on Carnaby Street. Well, really? Beautiful. They do it every year, but this year I just thought it was amazing. Anyway, so, and then you have to start out presents, right? And uh, it takes a lot of time. So what do you do? Like you go to the stores and you run around the stores and it's just too much, right? There's stuff everywhere. There's Christmas music in every single shop. There's people everywhere bumping in and grumpy and grabbing the last stuff. 
And Charlotte, she's like, I'm just wasting precious hours here trawling the streets. So she's bummed out. She gets home. She's wasted a whole afternoon. And uh, she's, you know, scrolling Instagram to calm down. Right. And lo and behold, there's a closing down sale in her feed, right? A closing down sale of a Danish brand that Charlotte has always kind of loved. Oh, yes. Like bacon, Danish bacon. What other Danish brand is there? Lego? <laughs> no, no, like Danish things like, uh, like you know, s- design stuff, Scandi design oh, okay. things, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, very nice. Like, yeah. Right? So, and the prices are amazing because the store is closing. And this is before Christmas. Fantastic. Right? Beautiful porcelain bowl set she's coveted for years for one of her girlfriends. She can finally get it for like a tenner. Huh. Right? And the site, everyone's going crazy. Like there's like comments everywhere. There's like 453 people are currently looking at this item and 75,000 people are looking at this item and not 75,000, but 75. It sounds completely legitimate to me, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't being discussed on the Smashing Security podcast. No, but pay attention, pay attention, because there is a, there's a question at the end of this. All right. Then it flashes that someone just, you know, in Denmark has just purchased this. This is a Danish company. Danish people are buying it everywhere. And Charlotte's not surprised. Too good to be true. Prices are great. So she trolls through. She uh, accumulates a very nice, sizable shopping basket full of trinkets. Mm-hmm. And then uh, she uh, goes to the, you know, pay for it all and stuff. And she gets, you know, she gets there and she puts in her name and she goes and searches for certain things. But the search function doesn't work at all. It just kind of barfs. Right. Completely barfs. Hmm. And she's like, oh, you know, they're closing down. They're not going to put any time in that, you know. <laughs> so she enters her email address, right? Charlotte at blah, blah. And, um, and a line comes up when she's registered saying, you have two minutes and blah, blah seconds to complete the purchase. And uh, but don't worry, we've added an additional discount, right? Because the total, you know, she's thinking the total would have been about this, but they're adding in like now it's a mere seventy five pounds for a dozen. An even better deal for the Danish an pastries. Even better fucking bacon. deal. Yeah. Um. So what does Cheryl do? She jumps up and finds her credit card. Right. Fills in all the info. Mm-hmm. Happy because she wants to get there before all the stuff disappears. Mm-hmm. And boom, things complete. She breathes out. She's like, I'm done. Christmas is sorted. But she gets this like nagging feeling like, was the stuff just a bit too cheap? Like, really? Like, was it just a bit too cheap? And was the site like really legit? Like, did she do any checking at all? And the question is, Graham, like, what should Charlotte do now? Because I'm Charlotte Graham. Oh, <laughs> I'm oh my Charlotte. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I <know>. Jesus. <laughs> I know. Oh, my. I, can, no. I cannot tell you how many red fucking lights there were. What? That I completely decided to ignore. Charlotte. I'm not Charlotte. kidding. Listeners, I am Charlotte, and I feel like a pillock. But hang on, do, do you do you know if this, do you know if this is a scam or not? I'm going to send you the website. So let me send you the website now. Oh, f- oh okay, brilliant. Yeah, get me infected. Yeah, get me to fall for it. <laughs> I don't okay. think that. Send me the link. Okay, hang on. I'm starting my tour browser. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's the site. So it came from an Instagram ad, and it went to this site. The first thing is this is acting like a, a shop that would be representing many types of brands, like a distributor. But on the website, there is only this one brand's items. So, all right. I'm just doing a little bit of searching here. Yeah, yeah. Do some do some searching. Do some searching. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Tell me. This is not good, Carol. I know. Tell me. I'll tell you why this is not good. So what I, the first thing I did was I did a, a domain who is lookup on this. Okay. And this site was registered, so it was created for the first time on the 10th of December. Yep. So it's only been live for now eight days. Yep. Uh, it was registered, it looks like, in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, so yeah. number one, yeah. no, no, but for listeners, if ever in this situation, first thing you do, if it's too good to be true, like I fucking know I should do, but did not do, uh-huh. do a who is lookup, okay? Yeah. 
So you go to whois.com, put in the URL, and that's it. It'll tell you when it was registered. Good. What What next, Graham? Keep looking because it gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't, hang on. I'm, go, I'm going to go in on a different route. So at the moment, I've sort of put my maximum shields up to... Uh, <laughs> yes. So you make, you make me do this live. So I'm not... Okay, now I've got some pictures and things. So closing sales up to 90% off. Right. So... See, it seems unlikely that they'd have a closing sale and they've only set up the website just over a week ago. You think? Um, <laughs> so you paid with your credit card, did you? Which I think is probably the only move that I did was that was intelligent in this entire process. Yes, exactly. Good that you didn't use... A debit card. A debit because card. Because then you're screwed. Although even in this case, as we've discussed in the show in the past year, because I was the plonker that fell for everything and activated and authorized everything, I am potentially liable for the charges. So I'm, I've got now pop-ups of people who claims have just made purchases on the store. Exactly. And I fell for that shit. Oh. And there's this very dodgy trusted store. I never trust these things which say trusted store in the, in the corner. And when you go there, it says, oh, yes, 100% verified. Tick, green tick, green tick. And you just think, well, that's worthless. That's just a thing saying that you've got HTTPS, but that doesn't cost you anything. Um, well, oh, it's got a Twitter link. Have you gone to the Twitter no, link? No. Oh. Did I go to the Twitter link? No. Oh, I have. What it actually does, their Twitter link goes to twitter.com. It doesn't... So it has the icon of a Twitter link. <laughs> okay, can I tell you things I noticed on this okay. fucking site? Go on. Um, go on. So if you go to their privacy agreement, their their actual company name is not in there. They've just basically taken oh. a template and haven't filled in the blanks. Claim to have founded in 1954, but they only created their website eight days ago and are now closing I down. I know. Globally, they have around 150 stores, they say. Oh, they're on NASDAQ, Helsinki, they claim. Have you looked on the NASDAQ in Helsinki? <laughs> no. <laughs> Graham, so so within like about 15 minutes of me sharing my fucking contact details with them and buying crap yeah. for fucking throwing away 75 pounds. Happy Christmas, Graham. That was your present. Um you may have lost more than that, though, Crow. Just just because you you just because you bought seventy five pounds worth. So let me tell you what I've done, right? And then you can tell me if there's anything else I should do All because right. I'm pretty convinced that I just got completely stupidly, oh dear, emotionally led uh, down a track, even though I know better. And I just I have a newfound uh, respect for. It's so stupid. It was the time limit that did it for me. It was so stupid. Oh my there God, were people pro- in my house. There were people in my house that I could have gone, hey, what do you think of this? I'm just looking at the prices. The prices are about a tenth of what they claim I the normal. Just shut up. I know. I was basically It's like 90% like, off for these things. I know. I know. So they did send me a fairly dodgy receipt thing. It's like, you know, like, here's your tracking number. Get in touch oh, with yeah. us with a very dodgy support uh, address. I contacted my credit card company well done. and I say, what do I do now? Yeah. And they said, actually, we thank you for calling, but we can't do anything for five days because it, it's now a pending. It's not processed. But if the payment does get processed, even though you have requested. So it's important that I get in touch with the merchant and say, I want this revoked. Right. So I have emailed the dodgy support address that they provided to say, I want to cancel this order. Da, 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 da. And I need that kind of evidence for my credit card company. Carol. Yes. I've just found an article on an anti spyware blog all about this site saying it is a scam. You see, and don't. It's the store closing clearance sales scam. Discounts are steep as 90%. That's right. It's exactly the site you're talking about. You see, and you know what's the shittiest thing is that because I'm not on social media, I somehow fell into this because I fell in through that route. That was like the rabbit hole that I went through via that route. And I'm not au fait with the Instagrams of this world. So it appears that they have used a legitimate brand imagery in some places. but Yes, ours yeah. was. And we did the reverse search yeah, on that yeah. stuff. But yeah, I fell hook, line, and sinker. So any links, Graham, just please uh, throw them in the show notes for me. Quite a lot of people who've written about this, yeah. But just in the last 
week or so. So there you go, listeners. Hmm. <laughs> and it's going to cost me at the moment maybe nothing because the I have to say when I called the credit card company they were uh, incredibly kind and helpful. Um, oh. They really were, and they basically I'm going to call. We'll see what happens, and I will report in the new year. That's good. But you know what? You know, well done you for using your credit card. The other tip I could give people is you could have a different credit card number for online purchases, which may have a limit as to how much can be spent on it. Some people have cards. I don't have one of these, actually. Maybe you have one of these, which can create virtual card numbers. Yes. Did I use that card? Oh, you do, but you didn't use it. It was in a area of the house where someone was maybe sleeping. Oh. So, look, I almost didn't do this story, right? Because it is flipping mortifying. Right. Like, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> and also pissed off with myself. But at the same time, I think the one thing that I took away from it is it's amazing how sometimes you can get yourself in a psychological state for whatever reason, and you will, it, it leads you and you just got to take a breath. And I fell for hook, line and sinker, even though I know all about this shit. And it's mortifying, but it happened to me. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's very, very good that you've shared this story. I have to say, from my experience of things like Instagram, the ads there can be really compelling. There's something about them where you just kind of think, oh, that's, that looks so cool. I just don't play on Instagram. And yeah. I, yeah, I got lured into. Can you report it as well to Instagram? The ad, if, if you saw the ad again. Yeah, yes. I can, I'll block, every time I do, I'm now blocking or reporting. Yeah. But I have no idea where that goes. But yeah. Hmm. Anyway, beware. <laughs> happy Christmas. <laughs> you say happy Christmas to me. I'm now not getting this crockery or whatever. I know. Well, well, you know, you can come over and please scrabble. Okay. <laughs> Thank you to Smashing Security sponsors Vanta, where you can shortcut compliance without shortchanging security. Expand the scope of your security program with Vanta's market-leading compliance automation. Vanta's 5,000-plus global customers report saving over 300 hours in manual work and up to 85% of cost for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, GDPR, custom frameworks, and more. And with Vanta's 200-plus integrations, you can easily monitor and secure the tools your business relies on. From the most in-demand frameworks to third-party risk management and security questionnaires, Vanta gives SaaS businesses of all sizes one place to manage risk and prove security in real time. As a special bonus, Smashing Security listeners get a whopping 20% off Vanta. Just go to vanta.com slash smashing. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash smashing. If you work in security or IT and your company has Okta, this message is for you. For the past few years, the majority of data breaches and hacks you read about have something in common. It's employees. Hackers absolutely love exploiting vulnerable employee devices and credentials. But imagine a world where only secure devices can access your cloud apps. Here, credentials are useless to hackers, and you can manage every OS, even Linux, from a single dashboard. Best of all, you can get employees to fix their own device security issues without creating more work for IT. The good news is, you don't have to imagine this world. You can just start using Collide. Collide is a device trust solution for companies with Okta, and it makes sure that if a device is not trusted or secure, it can't log in to your cloud apps. Visit collide.com slash smashing to watch a demo and see how it works. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash smashing. And welcome back. Can you join us at our favorite part of the show, the part of the show that we like to call Pick of the Week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week is the part of the show where everyone chooses something like. Could be a funny story, a book that they've read, a TV show, a movie, a record, a podcast, a website, or an app. Whatever they wish. It doesn't have to be security related necessarily. Better not be. Well, my pick of the week this week is uh, actually a podcast, Carol. Oh. Uh, or an audio documentary. It wasn't a podcast until I saw the creator of this audio documentary post about it on Twitter. And I said, oh, it'd be lovely if you had this as a podcast. And he said, all right. 
and he shoved it up on our podcast host. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's very good of him. Um, his name is Lucas Testro. Okay. And he has made a documentary uh, in three parts about the life and work of Donald Cotton. Now... I know that name. Why do I know that name? You don't know this Are name. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. I don't think you know Donald Cotton. Donald Cotton. How can I explain? You know, when I choose a pick of the week, I quite often think I'm in a dilemma, right? Do I choose something that I really like or do I choose something that I think listeners will actually like? In this case, I suspect only a very niche number of our listeners will enjoy this because the biggest audience probably for this is a Doctor Who fan audience, but not just a fan of Doctor Who generally, but a real kind of oh, in deep. Oh, Wasn't he a Doctor of, Who writer? He was a Doctor Who writer in the 1960s. He wrote two Doctor Who stories, The Gunfighters, which was all about the gunfighter at the OK Corral, and The Mythmakers, which was all about the Siege of Troy uh, and things like that. And I've never actually seen The Mythmakers because it was destroyed by the BBC. I have seen bits of The Gunfighters, but as a young lad, I loved reading those two particular novelizations. So Doctor Who stories were novelized. These two were novelized by Donald Cotton himself, and they are two of the funniest books I have ever read. Do you not think you've not told me this before in our friendship that has been about 30 years long now? I'm, it's, it's Is it possible, possible I've told... when all the Doctor Who books were living in our office space for about a decade? <laughs> Do you think it's possible? That I said, here's a particularly yes. good one. I really love Donald Cotton. It's really funny. Well, that's what this documentary or podcast is all about. It's in three parts. It's about 45 minutes per part. It's called Mythmaker, The Lost Legacy of Donald Cotton. And you find out about his life. This very witty chap who had a bit of a sad life, uh, a difficult life, a lot of a lot of lady action. Uh, but at uh, the same time, he was... Seems that he was unfulfilled, both as an actor and a lyricist. TV, he felt, was beneath him. He wanted to be more into the stage. And uh, it's quite moving. And I Aww. really enjoyed this podcast. I suspect there are about three people who may enjoy it who are listening as well. It's a great tale about somebody's life and uh, the impact they had. And it's extremely well put together by Lucas Testro. So I really wanted more people to hear it. He interviews people. He manages to get in touch with Donald Cotton's family, his estranged son, other people, oh, cool. people who used to yeah. be married to him. He, he used a lot of sort of open source intelligence to reach out and get in touch with people. It's absolutely fascinating how he did it. And it's a great little documentary. I really enjoyed it. So if you're into Doctor Who, or if you just like to hear about stories about people's lives, I certainly love to hear stories of people's lives, then I can recommend Mythmaker, The Lost Legacy of Donald Cotton. And if you manage to get hold of a copy of the Gunfighters book or the Mythmakers, you'll really enjoy those as well. Are you looking for first editions, Clue? No, I, I think I've probably got first edition. Actually, no, I, I, oh, I gave away all my Doctor mm -hmm. Who books to a charity shop before my son was born. Smart. I thought, I'm never going to have kids. I'll give these all away. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I had a kid. Uh, I've got them as PDFs. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Not really the same, though. Hey-ho. Anyway, that is my pick of the week. Carol, what's your pick of the week? Well, you know, some of us are going to be inundated with people this holiday season. Others mm -hmm. may not be. Some of you also may have people you wish you were with, but can't be because you're traveling or you're in a different country, different part, you know, it's too expensive, yeah. all that stuff. So how do you connect? Well, of course, there's the video call, right? Yes. But they can be quite difficult. I don't know if you've done, we all have done family-wide ones, especially during the pando, <laughs> where you're sitting there and everyone's like, you know, <laughs> my other house parents would sit there and they, I think their, their screen was smudged with some kind of grossness. So they looked like they were in a sepia, like 1920s screen. <laughs> it's just so weird. <laughs> Anyway, so you have these situations and everyone's kind of awkward in these calls and stuff, but maybe, maybe you could do some good old Christmas games, those that people play around the fireplace. Ah. Virtually. Okay. So I found a list, uh, which I'll share in the show notes. Oh, where this is brilliant. There's a number of different ones and I'm going to share my, my, my favorites here. Okay. So there's virtual karaoke Christmas. <laughs> 
where you would download an online karaoke player or just share your screen. Yep. And everyone has a chance to join in, <laughs> screaming from your houses, right? There's the virtual scavenger hunt where one person puts together a list of crazy items that may or may not be in the house. Oh, and then you all have to run off and go and get them. You have to all run off and find out as many as you can. And the one who has the most is the winner. And it could be things like batteries, family photograph, you know, condom wrapper, whatever. What happens if Auntie Marge runs off and there's suddenly a scream (laughs) and a thud? (laughs) And you realise he's fallen down the stairs, <laughs> stepped on a roller skate. <laughs> you can play Never Have I Ever. Ah, uh, that's a bit kinky, isn't it? I've never played that. Well, I don't know. But I think on Zoom, it's quite fun, I think, because the idea of it or on Zoom or on any video player, but would, basically the idea would be like, if someone says Never Have I Ever, X, whatever, and those that are guilty of it, have to keep their cameras on and those that aren't turn them off. Uh. Right? So so you turn off your screen and then the only person left is the right. yeah. Perv. You have two truths, one lie. We all know that game. Oh, that's good fun, yeah. Right? Okay, so Graham. Yeah. I'm mean, I've got one for you here. All right, go. I have ridden an ostrich. <laughs> no. I have water skied barefoot like Jesus. Like Jesus. I don't think Jesus did water ski, Carol. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, maybe it was invisible, like, you know, Wonder Woman's plane. Maybe he kept his sandals on. Okay. <laughs> I love tricking people into eating durian fruit. Well, I know that one's true because you've tricked me into eating durian fruit and it's absolutely mm-hmm. disgusting. So that's just two truths and a lie. So it's either you've water yep. skied or barefoot no skis oh i see that must hurt or what was the other one ridden an ostrich you've not ridden an ostrich that would be cruel (laughs) i've never ridden an ostrich you know me well the my pick of the week for those of you at home or away from home is riding an ostrich that's pick of the week (laughs) fun 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 well That just about wraps up the show for this week and wraps up the Smashing Security podcast for the year. 2023. Goodbye. (laughs) We Mm -hmm. are going on a little break. It's been a wonderful year, hasn't it? 2023. So marvellous. I'm sure 2024 will be so much better. It says here. I'm hoping for less worrying, more talking. Just saying. We will be back in the second week of 2024. January the 11th, I think our episode comes out. So don't forget us. Oh, pff, of course they won't. Of co- <laughs> Graham, don't be so needy. <laughs> In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter at Smash Insecurity. And we're also on Mastodon as well. And we also have a Smash Insecurity subreddit. And don't forget to ensure you don't miss our episode when we come back in January. Follow Smash and Security in your favourite podcast apps such as Spotify, Overcast and Apple Podcasts. And huge, huge thank yous to our episode sponsors, Vanta and Collide. And to our wonderful Patreon community. It's thanks to them all that this show is free. For episode show notes, sponsorship info, guest list and the entire back catalogue of more than 352 episodes. How can you be bored? Check out SmashingSecurity.com. Until 2024. Cheerio. Bye bye. Bye. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I uh, was I'm trying to build a Christmas album. Oh yeah. And I wanted to get different genres. So I was looking for rap Christmas albums. There's not a lot of that. There does not a lot of that. All right. But uh, I then ended up in Christian rap Christmas albums. C rap as it's known for short, yes. <laughs> Maybe. And uh, there's this one called Jesus It's Your Birthday. Hey Jesus, it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jesus. Do you remember I bought you uh, Billy Idol's Christmas album? You did, but I didn't have a CD player. So, oh, you know, right. it was okay. you were just about a, two decades too late. <laughs>